My name is Omi Ola Bintun. I'm from Ocean State, Mongon precisely. And I'm married with three kids, and I'm an actress, a producer, and a writer. I write my script, and at the same time, I'm a registered nurse, and that's me. Yeah, when we're talking about script writing, script writing is a gift, you know, it's a talent. It's not something you can just sit down and sum things up. Okay, let's start from having a story, or oh, I've got a story I want to develop, and you need to compare and contrast. If I want to write my story, most of my story, I get them overnight, maybe when I'm sleeping, I have to think about it before I sleep because during the day, I don't write during the day. I write in the night when everything comes down and I'll think about it. Okay, how do I do it? What do I do? Where do I put my suspense? Where do I start it from? Okay, how do I conclude it? So at the end of the day, when everything comes down, you will definitely have the idea. It will come. The situation that surrounds you helps you to build a story, you know, to build your script, you know, to make it a whole one. So it's, it's, a, it's a talent. You need to calm down when you want to write. Every, everybody can do it. I, I won't say some people can't do it. We can do it all, but we just need, you know, to put more creativity, to give a time out, to bring something out. So it's not something you don't give time to. You have to give your time to it. Because after writing it, you will still come back to it. Check where are the flaws. Okay, these are the things I need to take out. These are the things that are not realistic. Story are not real. Some things happen in your life and you think, oh, if I tell people, they won't believe me. But it's real. But when you write it, some people will tell you, no, this is not right. But when it happens to you, it's right. Have you ever seen someone that something will happen to you? And when you're telling somebody, oh, this thing happens to me, no, it's not possible. So that's just the thing about writing. It's complicated. You have to be very, very careful and it's sensitive as well. So it's hard work. As I've said earlier, it's a talent. When you give, there are some people that will approach me with stories, with scripts. There are good script writers outside there. But the problem with me is that when you tell me something, I've never got a story from anybody. All my movies, I wrote them. All my movies, I wrote them. So I'm like, OK, when you give me a story, when you write it this side, I may think, oh, why can't we go this way? Because we don't have the same idea. If I write it in my own way, and you come to me, oh, we mean like my directors, they will come to me, okay, we mean let's do it this way. Yeah, you can chip in something. But I will write it, but I like it. I, I like writing scripts. And at the same time, I like acting. When I write my scripts, I give a way out, you know, for me to get involved in the story as well. So I'm inclusive. I love it both. I combine both. When I write it, then I'm inclusive as well in my scripts. So I combine both and it's easy for me. And I can do others as well. So it's not about my own scripts alone. When you write your own scripts, when I see I will chip something in, well, can we do it this way? If you are a movie producer and I come on your set and I see your script, oh, sorry, can we just add something? If you, if you, don't, if you didn't agree, there's no, there's no crime in that. But I like both. It's something I enjoy. It's easy. We can do it. So I love it. Um, when I started, I started in 2003 with Wemi Moore production in Ibadan. And um, 
it was all okay then. And later, I left there to Ayolu Yemi and um, Baba one day. I worked with Baba one day as well. During that time, I had a break, which I had to, you know, quit for some, some time because um, some challenges that I may want, I don't want to, you know, go into details of um, like I don't I don't want that to go on here because um, when when you are focused when you are focused if anything happens and you think oh this thing is gonna distract me the best thing is to avoid any distraction if you don't avoid any distraction you know you're not gonna get there so I'm like okay I've got distraction a lot of distraction and I had to quit for some time then I came back not that far to the industry, but I don't want to, you know, go much in a, that's it. So, a lot of challenges. Waywardness, no, don't say that, we don't. That's a, that's a nice way to say, <laughs> to say that than that. Anyway. That's what they say. But the experience you don't have, then you don't have the idea of it. If you don't have the experience, you don't have the idea. Right, when you're talking about what I've passed through in the industry, when I first started, you know, as a newcomer into the industry, most people will be like, oh, do you want to ask? Then come and meet me in my room. And I'm like, Oh my God, as I've said earlier, I'm a shy person. I'll be like, oh no, but I'm not dating the person. Then I'll be like, you didn't approach me, you know, those old style, like, but you didn't approach me now. You want me to come to your room, you know, all these teenagers, whatever. I'm like, no. Then I wasn't a teenager then, but I have the mentality of like, no, baby, you know, all this babyish mentality, like, oh no, if a guy didn't toast you, you know, I won't come close to you. You have to trust me even if you... And all these are producers then. They're like, if you want to act, come to my room. And you'll be like, okay, sir, I'm here. Sit down there. Okay, sir. Um, you're sleeping here tonight. And I'll be like, sir, you're sleeping here tonight. And you'll be like, excuse me, sleeping here. Why do I have to stay here? Okay, sir, I can't do that. Oh, if you can't do that, then you need to leave. All right, sir, thank you. And when you do that, it's rude. Because one, they are elderly, they are your seniors as well. You have to respect them. So when you say that, they will say you disrespect them. When you say that, they will say you disrespect them. And when that happens, what does that mean? You are out of the track. And anytime you get to another location, they'll be like, oh, that girl is very rude. It's not because you're rude, it's because you can't. So when you say actors and actresses, Actor gets more, um, actress get more money than actors. No, I don't agree with that. We have many actors, as a male actors, that are more richer than female actors. So I won't say it's hard work, and most of our fans are lovers. They love us and they appreciate us a lot. So if someone says, "Oh, Wumi, oh, I appreciate what you do. I want to give you something." And the person transferred maybe like 50 million into my account and transferred the same amount to a male account. Will you, tell, will, will you come to me and tell me I'm wayward? No, it's not like that. It depends on how we, you know, present our things. People, but I will say most of our male actors as well are more richer than female actors. When you see a female actress, most of them are female actors do another business as well. Most of them sell cream, they buy houses, a lot of things. So it's not about waywardness. No, I, I won't support that. Our lovers, our supporters, our fans, they appreciate us financially. It is I didn't say other some people don't do it. That's the problem. I'm not into I'm not into that. And I'm not in support of that, but I won't say what you don't do, what you don't experience, you don't have an idea of it. Oh, we have our individual differences, and we are free to our own opinion. 
You can do whatever you like with your life. It's your choice. You can decide to go naked. You can decide to dress decently. So you choose one. Either you want to go naked or you want to dress decently. Same thing with people throwing their achievements on social media. You know, I won't say they shouldn't do it. If they, if they are pleased with it, come on, go ahead with it. Throw it. My own opinion is different from yours. But our culture is different from another people's. And you know, we are not all Yorubas. We have Yoruba actors, but all of us are not Yorubas. I don't want to mention names. All the Yoruba actors, we can see Igbo there. They are not Yorubas. So their own culture is there as well. So some people might enjoy throwing you know, their achievements on social media. So some people, uh, they, they, they appreciate private life. And some are like, oh my God, if I have this little thing, I have to let people know about it. So we have uh, individual differences and people are free to their own opinion. If I'm not in this profession, what will I be doing? Oh, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse, but... I, this is my passion, being an actor, being a writer. If I didn't do it, I'm not fulfilled. If I didn't do it, I'm not happy. I'm happy as a nurse anyway, but I'm still telling you, if I am a nurse, only a nurse, I won't say just a nurse, because nurse is a big career. If I'm ordinary nurse, like, um, how will I say if you just if you just go to a school university thinking oh because other people are doing it I want to do it is another thing but when you have passion for something like going to nursing and you do it you completed the course and you are in it you have to be there with your own eyes but at the same time if I'm not into acting and script writing I'm telling you I'm not fulfilled I won't be happy it's something I love when I say something I love something I can give and leave other things for to be successful. So I love it. If I don't do it, I'm not fulfilled. So if you support me, I think you're part of my dream. Anyway, if we, okay, let me, as you've questioned me, let me now answer you. Now, in our industry, as you've asked earlier, if you are not wayward, if you don't have rich fans to give you money, where do you get money? No. You need to work. You can see all of us, we are working. All the actors now, we are working. We are not just actors alone. We are into one or two things. You know, some are dealers, some are estate managers, some are, you know, they're selling cranes, some are doing other things, other business that we think, oh, this brings money. So don't tell me I should give out. What I mean is I can't leave acting for nothing. No. I cannot leave my acting career for nothing. I'll do both together because both complement each other. Where do you get money? Despite that, my husband supports me a lot. He's my executive producer. But despite that, I still have to work. I'm not a lazy person. No. So, if you want, or if you can tell me to leave my nursing, you can tell me, do you want me to leave it? Then if I need money for my production, then I'll come to you. Is that okay? No, just tell me. If you want me to leave it, I'm going to leave it. Then when I want to produce, I'll come to you. Oh, I need money. So, we need it. We need both, but I love acting and script writing as well. I love it. That's a big question. I would just cheap, as I've said earlier, we have our differences. We are free to our own opinion. And, um, I believe in our own personal um, intellectual property. We don't need to copy others. We are, we are 
Nollywood. They are Hollywood. And it starts from the head, you know. When we want to do something, you can just grab it and start doing it. We need to start from somewhere. We need to start from the scratch, from the crew to the actors to all, you know, the post production as well. So everything needs to be improved. The sound, DP, everything needs improvement. And we are getting there. Can you compare the movies you watched in 2010 to the movie we released in 2015? No. To the movie we released in 2020, 2019? No. We are getting there. And with speed, if you look at it, we are, you know, speeding up, we are improving. We are, we'll be there. We'll be there. Oh, it depends. The producer, it's not only the directors, even producers. If I write my script and I think, oh, I want this person, I want Mr. A to, to play the lead role. Because when I'm writing my script, I see Mr. A in this role. And I called Mr. A. Mr. A says, oh, Wumi, I'm not available this so so date. I will come this so so date. And you've tabled everything, you've got everything ready. Now you, you've been to your directors, oh, I, I need another person to play this role. And your director says, oh, I'm going to get this person. This, the, the director is going to introduce to you the person he have a good rapport with. Do you get what I mean? He won't tell you, oh, can we go and call somebody, you know? You need to call somebody that you can work along with. So they've got their own preferences as well. So it's not based on friendship alone. They've got their own preferences. At the same time, those people, they are talented as well. If, some, if Mr. A can do it, Mr. B, you can do it as well. Mr. B can do it as well. So it's not only Mr. A. No. Train yourself to do it. So the director might be you know, trying to build up somebody else. Like, okay, it's not only Mr. A or Mrs. B in the industry. Let's try and get some. Some other people are there. Raw talent, they are there. And the director will be like, oh, I saw a girl or a boy in a location two months ago. I want us to introduce that person. Give the person a chance. So the directors at times, they have their own preferences, but it's not based on friendship alone. That's why they're directors. Because if you give rubbish being a director, every blame will be put on you as a director because everybody lies on you. Even the producer, everybody needs to uh, respect the directors, because you are pushing us, you are directing us where to go. So if you mess up, everybody is messed up, and that's it. Uh, anyway, I'm not a UK based actor. As people said, I'm a Nigerian based actor, okay? But because my family are in UK, so they believe I'm a UK-based actor. I shelter both UK and Nigeria. So I go to UK, I come to Nigeria, both. So I'm not a UK-based actor. I don't know what we can do to resolve that issue. I mean it. I don't know. You can force people to do things. If we are shooting, because it happens every day. If I want to shoot in a very local place, if that's how I develop my scripts, or I want a very you know, local place to shoot my movie, because that will bring out the glamour. If that's my view, I want to achieve it. I don't want to cheat. And when you get there, they'll be like, ah, baba, ah, eh, you are too racing, you like to ah, ah, ring, ah, if I need to call, okay, boy, yeah. You know, you just have maybe like one million that day with you. And they'll be like, ah, we've seen the money. Where did you see the money? I don't know. It happens, and they will know how much you've got. And you'll be so shocked, like, excuse me, how do you know? Ah, you've got money, we can see that. And at the end of the day, you spend like 450 on area boys. 
450,000, 200,000 at the end of the day, you won't achieve what you want to achieve. We cannot continue like that. So those are the restrictions we have. So those are the barriers we have. So if we can tell them, let's do it together. If we make a move, it's for everybody. It's for our country, it's for our culture, it's for our heritage. Let's do it together. They're not supporting us. They ask for money. Why can't we go and walk? Let's walk. We, you can stay on the streets. You can ask for money, good, if you think that's what you want to be doing. You want to be begging for money. Good, that's your choice. That's your opinion. Nobody is going to tell you not to start begging. Yeah, you're free to your opinion. But please, let's try to, you know, to do it stylishly. Let's minimize it. Don't let's disturb the actors. You know, hailing them to give you money. We are working so hard to get this money. And this money we are giving to you, at the end of the day, he didn't allow us to achieve what we want to shoot. Then what's the point? Then why do we need to give you money? You are not a location manager. Why do we have to give you money? So people give us their house to shoot movie free of charge without giving us trouble. Why the area boys giving us stress? Is it because of, you know, maybe because of our economy, because there's no job? Please, try and do something. Try and make us happy. Don't make it hard for us. Please. Um, presently, I'm working on compromise and taboo. Compromise and taboo? Yeah, compromise. Are this English movie? Thank you. Well? They are Yoruba. But, but because um, it depends on how you get your inspiration. When you are writing your script, it might be hard and difficult for you. It depends on your background. I'm a good Yoruba, as Yoruba girl. I'm a Yoruba girl, so they call. When I'm writing my scripts, we have something we call working tight. The, oh, this is how I write. It's all about compromise. That's how the, the when you have the inspiration, when you want to write a script, you will have something in your brain. Oh, this is where I want to write the script surround. So when I want to write it, I have compromised. This is what. So when I want to do it, oh, right. Then when I get to the location, if I want to do 100% movie like I did in Ataria Janako. Ataria Janako is 100% Yoruba movie. Okete is 100% Yoruba movie. So when I want to do that, then I will give it Yoruba title. But if it is not 100% Yoruba, I think I can give it both, either Yoruba or English type, because most of our Yoruba people as well, some, you will see some children, they will be like, oh, we don't understand. I'm like, you need to understand. So we need to carry them along as well. As I do 100% Yoruba production, I do mixture as well. So for other people, for all my fans that say they don't understand much as an in-depth Yoruba, but I think we should be able to. And it's not only Yoruba that watches my movie. Ibo watch my movie as well. Our movie. Don't let's say my movie. Our movie. So, they are Yoruba movie. <music> Coronavirus. Oh, we can do it. We are strong. Coronavirus um, is not for us. So don't be scared. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the way we are trying to protect ourselves in Nigeria, it's a good way, but I don't think we have um, the measure that can curb it as an, the high, high risk measure, you know. When you don't want a coronavirus, how do you go about it? What are the numbers? of the infected people in Nigeria. I don't think we've got anyone. I think we just had someone from Italy or whatever. I can't remember. I don't want to go there. It's different. Do you get what I mean? But let's just chip it in. We are saved. We are loved by God. God loves us so much. We have a very good you know, immune system. We don't wash our hands a lot like white people does. 
Sorry to use white. You know, everything they do, they wash their hands. Here, you know how we do it, you know. When you pick your nose, yeah, oh, bring that thing for me, and you eat it, and nothing happens. Even malaria, as strong as, you know, that malaria is, somebody will, you know, be, uh, you know, suffer from malaria, and you will take, you know, cup to drink water. The pro you share the same cup with the person suffering with malaria. And you know what? The, the other person drinking from that cup supposed to have malaria as well, but we don't have it. How do we do it? Is it a magic? No. God loves us. We are endowed. Africa is a country we need to cherish. Forget about our heritage. God loves us. How many have we recorded having coronavirus in Nigeria? Let's say Nigeria precisely. No. Is it because we are nates? No. Is it because we put the measure in place? No. It's because God, we are completed. I'm proud. As in, when I say I'm proud to say that, one of my doctors says, when I say, oh, I'm scared of coronavirus, and I say that in the UK, and he said, don't be scared. You can have it. I say, why? You are immune against it. So we thank God we are safe, but we don't want something else that will be, you know, worse than coronavirus. This is the end times. So I think virus are coming ups and down, but I just pray that the protection of the Almighty will be on us, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Many things. Like, first thing, I cannot go naked. No. I cannot go naked. And when you're talking about husband and wife having a romance scene on set, there are some extents I can get to say, no, I've had enough. And, and it should be. No, I will never do that for 500 billion. I mean 500 billion pounds. I can never have real sex, as you have said. I don't know. Maybe you don't. Are you a virgin? You don't understand what they mean by real sex. Real, as in real. Are, are you joking? Or we, we need to make you believe it. Put on something. Put pillow there. Then as in try to. And when I realize that you are going gaga, I'm going to push you. Because you're going to feel it as a lady. When a man comes close to you, especially when a guy has interest in you and you're on set together and you're trying to make people believe it, and you realize when a man is going gaga, you're going to say, isn't it? When, when you see that, you tell them, hold on, hold on, cut. You tell the cameraman to stop. And they're going to stop. And let the guy, you know, come down a little bit. It happens. But don't go to that extent. I think most of us don't go to that extent because children are watching it. We want them to, you know, to learn from me. If you want to watch such, go on social media, uh, on, the, on, the, on the, is it Netflix or whatever, go and search for adult movie, as an adult. I don't want to use the other word, adult. Go and search for it and watch that and fill up. Do whatever you want to do. Not a movie that we are using, you know, to preach, to teach our culture, no. Because your children, you know, they can walk in and see that. Having a towel, yeah, you can have a towel. Have your underwear inside and just wrap a towel. Put pillow, put on tights. There, there won't be any penetration. There won't be that. And when you see that the guy is like trying to, you know, go gaga, just tell the, you know, the crew to stop and let him calm down, you know. And that's it. We can't do it on set. We don't do it. We don't. It's not what you think. No. Though there should be a boundary because when you're married, um, you hold, you know, some integrity. I think there's somebody, and you are responsible for anything you do. And when you have a husband or when you have a wife, everything would do will affect your family. When you're going out to the location, you need to carry your husband and law along. If you have a wife, you need to carry your 
wife along. Even you need to let your children know. But if you're not married, you can go for two weeks. Nobody's going to, you know, ask you. You're responsible for any kind of where you want to go. And, um, I, but I, I won't lie to you. Though there are some extents of restriction in it when you're married. Because men, there are some things they won't permit you to do. If you want to go for like two months, they'll be like, excuse me, what are you doing? You can't do that. So I would say, yes, when you are married, there is a little bit of restriction to, to your movement as an actor. Divorce. What makes a marriage to be filled? Many reasons. And um, <clears throat> it's not something everybody prays for, but when it happens, it happens. And we cannot force anybody to stay in a marriage. You don't force yourself to stay in a marriage that you're not happy or comfortable in it. So when you're not comfortable, you can call your husband before divorce. Everything is not about divorce because when you divorce a man, you're going to marry another man, isn't it? You're going to marry another man. Do you know what you're going to meet there? No. Sorry to say, men are almost the same. They have the same mentality. They are, they are like children, you know. Treat them like babies. Talk to them before some, I won't say some are animals, I won't use that word, because that's not good. Some are wicked, like they want, this is what they want you do, to do, and if you don't do it, this is what they want you to do. And if you don't do it, then they're going to be mad at you. And when that kind of thing happens in a relationship, <clears throat> or your husband is cheating, and you feel like, oh, the best thing is to get out of this marriage, no. I don't think that's the solution. No matter what you're going through, you have to sit down with him, talk over it, think, and you know, and pray over it. If there is a way out, if someone needs, you know, um, prayer, or if you need advice, you know, to learn more about relationship. And if that doesn't work, and you think this is going to you know, lead to suicide, are you getting what I mean? Or maybe you're feeling depressed. Marriage is not worth killing yourself or feeling depressed. Because if you die, your husband is going to marry another person. And if her husband dies, the wife is going to marry another man. And that's it. So if you think you are not comfortable in your marriage, the best bet is to call the man, sit together, talk about it. Think of how to work it out. Then at the end of the day, if you think, oh, this is not working out, this is not working for us. I don't think we're, to, you know, we're, not, we're supposed to be together. I don't think this is going to work. And you think, okay then, darling, what do we do? Throw it out to the man. In a culture, man is the head. It is, I don't, I, I don't say you should continue. If a man says, okay, I don't want us to divorce, I want to continue beating you. You can't tell me to stay in the marriage and you continue beating me, no. If you think you are not comfortable, call an elderly person. I won't say pastor or a friend, no. Because they have their own issue as well. And they might give you wrong advice. You can call an elderly person that you think, oh, this is what is happening. What do I do? And when you realize this is getting out of hand, maybe beating you, you know, bully, abuse, and a lot of things, and you think, no, you are getting depressed. Any situation that making you to get depressed, get out of it. Don't force yourself, because if you die, life continues. And they're going to make the best of their life. So if you think you're not comfortable with it, if you think, OK, you're going to kill yourself, or you could, if you kill your husband by mistake, you're going to be killed. So why can't you get out of it? And that's it. It's not the solution. Divorce is not the solution, as I've said. Try to resolve it. But don't be glued into a relationship because you don't want to divorce. If you are having depression, if you're thinking of suicide and you think it's not going to work, get out of it and stay alive. 
and that's it. Why do we have single moms in the industry? Why do we have single moms in the industry? Right. If you ask me, I will have a reason. If I'm one, and all those single moms, they are, they are hard working. Because to raise children on your own, it's hard work. So for them to have decided that, okay, then I don't want any guy, something has gone wrong. It might be cheats, it might be a bully, anything. We don't know. They are innate. When you experience it, you've got the clue. So um, the reason why they are innate, the reason why they are single mom is best known to them. And nobody loves to be a single mom. But situation warranted. And what are they going to do? They're not going to kill themselves. They have to live by it. And life continues. So in our industry, most of our husbands, I would say, they don't understand. You need to let them know this is how it goes. If your husband think, right, I want to support you, yeah, they could. But the reason why we have single mom, different cases, is not about, some people have children before they came into the industry. So you still call them single mom. So somebody that got a lady impregnated and at the end of the day got married to another person. And I said, oh, I can be a second babe. We're together, even that's why we didn't have a wedding, but we had children together, like two or three. And you went ahead to go and date another person. I think I'm not comfortable with it. And that's it. And the lady said, oh, I'm not interested. You call that person a single mom. But she's not comfortable with the relationship. And what we do, we, you cannot get depressed and be acting at the same time. No. So that's why you think we have more single mom. When man wants to torture you, you feel you are in a hell. And when that happens, you will lose control. What we are doing has to do with our you know, brain. We need to retain information as an actor. So if you're having depression at home and you come on set and they ask you to interpret a role and you're looking like, you know, a dummy on the set, if they allow you to finish that job, next time they won't call you and that's the end of your career. So we think if you want to put end to my life, then why can't I just leave you and move on? So you can, you know, make, torture us inside inside the house and expect us to go outside and act and you know at the end of the day it's going to affect us people are going to say that you're not happy if we are not happy you're going to say on our face everything will show so i i, I say the reason why we not in our industry alone in our society in our society so our men needs to understand that they should support us as an actor support us if you marry me as an actor, see it as my passion. If I'm happy, you are, you are happy as well. If you are happy as a husband, your wife will be happy as well. But if you are making me feel like I'm in a hole, then what's the point? So if we are happy at home, we'll be happy at work. So our men should try to encourage us you know, to achieve this goal. Men, they are the age. Have I answered you? We have to depend on you. No matter if I'm walking, and that's the secret, I won't lie to you. I told you I've got babyish mentality. It doesn't mean I, I, you know, I don't have brain, but let me tell you. You know how baby you know, behaves. They will have something at hand. Can I have one more, please? It's not because they don't have one, but they want more. Treat us like baby and let us pamper you as baby as well, you know. Uh, we have to depend on you. 
that's why we are African. Men should go and work for us. We depend on you. And that's it. I'm telling you. Even other culture, I, I don't mean African, they, they like our African men. They like our African men. I'm telling you, that's the secret. Because they believe our men gives out. Though there are some staging men. I, I know the, you know the town, but I don't want to mention the town because my husband is from one of those towns that they say they are, you know. I don't want to mention the town, but my husband, you know, he started with IJ, and I, but I don't want to mention. Those town, you know, they know that they don't like to give money, but let me tell you, they are crazy spender. But because we think, oh, these age people, they don't spend. They are stingy. They are not. It depends on how you, you know, arrange your table. So I will tell you, no matter how I get my money, I still depend on my man for money. And I pray. You know, when you give out as a man, that's what men don't understand. If you give your wife or your girlfriend money, we have more. Because you are meant to be the head, not the tail. But if you expect and think, oh, my wife should give me money, your wife will continue to be the head of the family. But with that little you've got, give it to your girlfriend, your fiancé, and your wife. Have it. You know, and God sees my heart. This is what I've got. And you know, the lady will pray for you. Even if she didn't pray, her spirit will pray for you. So my answer is, we depend on a man as an African lady because man is the head. So we continue to depend on you. Thank you. Drug abuse. We abuse everything. In the, in the country or in the industry? In the industry. Which, are in the, which industry are we abusing? <laughs> which industry are we abusing drug? Did you see any drug? Did you see me smoking or doing anything? Anyway, it's not only in the industry. I'm telling you. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. But drug abuse, even water abuse, not only drug. Excess of everything is bad. If you smoke too much, you have the results. If you drink excessively, we have the results. Even water. Too much of water. Though excess water is good, but too much. If you don't have anything in you, you try it. Continue drinking from morning to night. Don't eat anything. And you think you are strong. Despite that water is very good in your system. That's the, it's very, it's the best. But I'm still telling you, too much of everything is bad. Let's try to come. It, not only in the industry. So I won't answer your question because you said in the industry. In, in the whole universe, it's everywhere. Even paracetamol, too much of it. When we take two in our country, so don't talk about the industry. Even you that you're asking me the question. If you have a headache, if you used to paracetamol, 500 milligrams, that's 1,000, one gram. That's 1,000 milligrams. If you use two paracetamol, after one and a half hour, and your husband asks you, how far about that headache and your temperature? Ah, I still have it. Use two more, use two more, use two more. You will take another two. It's not up to four hours. Let alone six hours. You take another two. Are you better now? Maybe I should use cocodamol. You forgot that there is paracetamol in cocodamol. That's codeine and paracetamol. You combine another two. Within six hours, you've used six tablets. Then who are you? You are a drug abuser. So we are all in it. Thank you. I don't promote it. It's just a joke that I just, you know, try to, you know, I just want it. To be. Let's be realistic. Drug kills, as in excess of it. I won't say you shouldn't smoke. It's your life. You can decide to smoke. It's, but let me tell you, it's, you know, there is disadvantage. We have lung cancer. When you drink too much, as an, I, I mean alcohol, you can drink, you know, sensibly. But please, let's try to minimize it. If you are smoking and you think you cannot control it, look for help, shout for help, ask for help. It's kills. If you are meant to spend like 100 years, it might cut it down to like 60 or 50. Please, don't drink excessively. Don't smoke heavily. Please, if you can even avoid it, if you can avoid smoking or 
drinking alcohol, please. It's for our health, not for anybody. Just, you know, to promote good and healthy lifestyle. Thank you. Actors that call each other out on social media. You are free to your own opinion, and that will be my answer. If someone can decide to go naked on social media, then what's called out now? If you can make a live chat, you realize you are not wearing something that makes sense. Even if your dad and your mom or your husband or your wife is not in, and you are putting on something that is, you know, your mind, even your camera will tell you that you are mad already. You are putting it on. You are doing that. Then you are, you are talking about call outs. You can even slap someone on social media. If someone can go naked on social... We are not talking about swimming now. As in go naked. Putting on, you know now, bra and pants. And think you want to be in vogue. You are a model. Yes, you want to go on social media. An actor doing that. And you are comparing that to call out. No. It's, if somebody, somebody can do that, then... Other people that are calling themselves out are free to do so. We have people that are private, and we have some other people that they feel like, oh no, I'm not private. I can do whatever I like with my life. It's your life. You can do whatever you like with it. I may prefer, you know, not to call you out as an actor. Do you get it? If I am an actor, I think I'm a role model. So, as a role model, you shouldn't fight. Even when people make you go gaga, no. Try to, you know, caution your temperament. You know the right thing. The Yoruba people used to say, any burum or any Thomas of Unloa, and it's the person that makes you go angry knows what he or she does. But she might think, oh, you don't need to call people out on social media. I'm saying it, but we are free to our own opinion. You can call people out. That doesn't make you to be a bad person. It's your own lifestyle. Some people are private, and they will be mad inside. So what I'm saying is that as a role model, because all actors are role models, we don't need to fight on social media. We don't need to be insulted on social media, especially between ourselves. You can do something I don't like. I will drive down to your house and tell you, oh, Sholakwe, I hate what you did. You know, and we insult each other, we might slap each other, not on social media. Some people will be like, oh, look at what she did. And they'll be so scared. It's scary. We don't need to do that. We are role model, please. I know, you know, we have, you know, level of tolerance, but let's try to, you know, Manage your anger. If there is no social media today, won't you fight? So if someone makes you go gaga, drive down to the person's house. If you want to fight, but I'm not, I'm not the person that fights. If you want to go and fight, go there, fight each other, insult each other, send message, but be mindful of the message you send as well. There is power in communication. As we use Instagram, Facebook, same thing with WhatsApp. We have to be very, very careful. So in everything we do, let's try and, you know, manage our temper you know if we don't if we are you know very high <clears throat> many things will be damaged and you know you know that what that means you as a brand as an actor is going to affect you but when you keep short that doesn't mean you are a dollar or you don't have sense or you are dense no that makes that gives you more power over the person that is passing on you so let's just try to, you know, manage our anger, especially on social media. Social media is not the best way to call ourselves out. We are one, and we should be able to support each other, not to call ourselves out. Please, but, as I've said, we are free to our own opinion, and we are adults. Right. Men are not cheap. As I've said earlier, they are the head. They should be respected. If you want to date a guy, we are in Western world now. There's a way, if you have interests, 
Though some men abuse the opportunity at times. You might just like a guy and they'll be thinking, oh, she likes me, she wants to date me. No, it's not because you want to date them. It's because you just like them. You don't want to discriminate between a girl and a boy and you feel like, oh, if I like a guy and a, a lady, I need to, you know, let you know, not dating level. Do you get what I mean? But what I'm saying, you, you said if a lady wants a guy, a lady have access easily to a guy. No, same way. If a guy need a girl, you know how to go about it, don't you? So I won't say I I I, I won't support that. No, men are not. Yo, okay, if I want to if I want to date you as a guy, if I come to you, hello Sanjo, how are you? How are you doing? I like you, or I just come to you. How how would you see me like a devil? That's our culture. Even if you like a guy, it's hard for us, you know, to go closer to a guy and say, oh, but there's a way you can make advance. Do you get it? There's a way. If you like a guy, if you are not married, I'm not talking about married lady now, married women, no. Don't try that. I'm not preaching that. But if you are not married and you think, oh, I have a guy that I have interest, there is no crime in that. If you like a guy, don't treat a guy being cheap because you might end up have a bad result. The guy might turn up, are you crazy? Ni? Uh -uh. Why are you come closer to me? Are you a devil? Ni? You know, there are some guys like that. You would think they are nice when you see them, but when they talk, they are very, very harsh. So, you can't just go to a guy and approach them. No, you can't. You need to find a way of, even if you are single and you think you love a guy, you can make advance to go to him. Just find a way to do it. Stylishly, not going to it, because you might get a negative result like, Beaten. They are not cheap. They are not cheap. Men are not cheap. I respect them. Anyway, okay. Places. I won't say place. Anywhere. We can have it anywhere. But the thing is, we cannot have it where people are. No. I, you know, I won't do what our culture don't support. That's me. But anyway, if this door is locked now, we can do it here. If the car is tinted with my husband, we're going to do it there. If we've locked the door and my husband comes to the kitchen, we're going to do it there. If my husband comes to the shower room and the kids are not home, we're going to do it there. It's nice there. It's very pleasant than to do it on bed. And that's it. That um, incident is so pathetic. So, so pathetic. I mean, the incident is so pathetic. Because she can't do it intentionally. I don't think, I won't say she cannot do it intentionally, but I think a normal person, oh God, a normal person in, with conscience, you cannot kill your husband. Even if you, if you find something, if I find something that looks weird and um, surprising in my husband's pocket, it happens in, in marriage. There are some things that will make you go crazy like I'm no more interested. But you need to caution yourself. It happens like you want to push your husband, you want to engage in fights. And when that happens, the other party might end up, you know, fainting or die. The guy might even faint. And be before they take the guy to the hospital, the guy might give up. And when that happens, what are they going to say? They're going to tag the lady to be, a, you know, murderer. And when that happens, did she kill him intentionally? She didn't kill him intentionally. So, like that incident, I felt so bad when I saw it on the social media and I'm like she shouldn't be killed as in the lady shouldn't be killed that's my own opinion that's my own opinion you know executing people in this country is bad it's bad 
especially when it happens mistakenly and the person show a remorse. A wife cannot kill us, but I, I, I think so. A good as a normal human being with brain, that you have active brain on your head, you cannot kill your husband. You've got a baby for him. The lady got a baby for him, isn't it? So why, why, why do we have to kill that lady? Why do they have to sentence her to death? No, they shouldn't do. It's not because I'm a woman, but it's because I think second chance should be given. Second chance should be given. We should give a second chance to someone. When you kill someone, you shouldn't be killed as an, I don't see it as a good thing. It's a form of sharing blood, and that's, those are the things affecting our country. Execution. Execution, it's a cause. When it happens, as that incident happened, and the husband died, the guy died, yeah, no. But you killed someone, two people died. Why, what are we promoting? And it's still going to happen. So we just, we just need to you know, manage our temper. We need to manage as a lady. Even when, I, I'm not saying a man should continue cheating, but even when you find your man cheating, even your blood sister cheating with, walk away. Don't push anybody. Don't drag. When, in that, during that process, when you're doing that, your body system works, you know, in a way you don't expect it. You are in another realm. And when you push, the person might just eat, you know, the world, and that could be the end. So when you find such thing, if you find some, something that makes you, you know, go gaga, go anger, unpleasant with it, you feel cheated, you feel hurt, let go. Don't fight. When you fight, you might kill someone, and you know our country, they're going to kill you back. And that's what happened. So let's just, ladies, let's try and manage our temper. When your guy cheats, let's, let him continue to cheat. Him. Let him continue to cheat. That's what you want to do. So that's my own view. But I think they're supposed not to have, you know, sentenced her to death. No. They can give her maybe like 20 or 30 years just to give her a second chance. I don't think she did it intentionally. I felt so bad for her, but there's nothing I could do. Yes. If I forgive you and you're coming back, I have my rules. Yeah. I'll forgive. That's your question. You said, can I forgive? A cheating partner. Good. Yeah, I can do it. I don't mind whoever you cheat with. Go, go on and cheat and come back. Then by the time you come back, I have my rule. If you still want me, if you want to go with that person you're cheating with, that means she's better than me. But you feel me, oh, I think you're better. And you come back. You know when someone cheats, it's not because that food is sweeter than what you have. It's because of that Ujuko Corona. You just want to eat something that is not yours. Go and eat it and come back. And when you come back, I will lay my rules. Before we start again, either your husband or let's say maybe when I wasn't married, I will lay my rules. One, the first thing is if I think, okay, let's say husband. First thing, when you come back home, I will let you know, don't be scared. Don't be afraid to come home. Don't think I'm going to, because during that process, you might end up, oh, I'm going to, no. I won't say no, you are free to come back home. But my rule is this, if you think as a husband, I still respect you as my husband, as, as the head of the house, as the head of the family. If you won't have anything to do with me, I won't send you out. Because you will go back to that person you are cheating with. You will start using condom, that's the first rule. The second thing you have to do, medical test, to check that you don't have any sexual transmitted disease and you are not HIV positive because I would not like you to put an end to my life because of your cheating. So if you are free of that, you're welcome back home. But you will be on condom rule at least one year, 12 months, good 12 months, condom rule, and that's it.
so I forgive him. Hello guys, my name is Umi Olabington, an actor and a movie writer. Oh my God, Broadway TV, you are the best. If you want to watch, you know, anything about celebrities, the, you know, the current events, go on Broadway TV, on social media, on YouTube. They are the best. They are crew, they are, they are top notch. And the, and the presenters, they are okay. Everything about them, I love it. When I was coming, I'm like, Broadway TV, where am I going? By the time I got here, I'm like, wow. When I said they wow me, Everything, their studio, everything, anything you need about content management, contact Broadway TV. They are the best. For your events, come to Broadway TV. They will give you the best package and they are affordable. Oh my gosh, you're going to enjoy everything about them. If you want to know much about the celebrities, run to the YouTube channel of Broadway TV. You're going to get more about the doctors, nurses, what else? Coronavirus, you know, that's what is raining now. I'm just joking. Go on about, you know, everything about uh, social amenities, everything. Go on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook to know much about the celebrities, about what is happening in our society. It's not about the celebrity alone. It's about the news, the current affairs. Go on social media, go on YouTube and watch learn and patronize Broadway TV. They are the best. Everything about them are the best. Broadway TV, I support you.